Hey guys, if, if anybody uh, wants to know uh, <clears throat> a bright economist, if anyone wants to know what the pulse of America is, what the pulse of around the world is, um, all they have to do is, is listen to this guy named Dr. Lacey Hunt. And uh, I just hit, typed in Dr. Lacey Hunt 2023. There's, there's several videos. This is the guy right here, the man, the myth, the legend himself. I think that consumers need to get their financial house in order uh, to protect themselves from the potential economic vulnerabilities, which I believe lie. He uh, runs this, this thing called Housington Investment Management Company. Uh, he's one of the, the lead guys over there. Uh, most of the guys in the Fed and the government today, they, they're a bunch of idiots. <clears throat> they have no idea. Uh, <clears throat> Janet Yellen the other day, uh, I saw a video of her. The, the budget was $7 trillion and the, the revenue is $3 trillion from taxes. So, and, and she said it doesn't add any more to the debt. Uh, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to uh, figure out that if you spend uh, $7 trillion a year and you only bring in $3 trillion a year, that you're actually going uh, negative $4 trillion. And then she tried to say that it actually uh, helps balance the budget. You know, I mean... You can't you can't make this stuff up, guys. You can't make it up. But if you ever want to know what's going on in the economy, this guy is is the the brain, and he uh, talks in such a way sometimes that it goes way over my head that I have no idea what the hell he's talking about. Uh, but he's a fucking genius. He's, he's a genius, and you can look and go back. Uh, I haven't checked out the last couple quarters. But um, one thing I will say, you know, that a lot of economists don't get right is, is when, when the guy who first talked about, you know, the money supply and stuff like that, the velocity of money back then was pretty much constant. But the money supply today is not constant. Uh, the, and when when the government basically increases the money supply by 40 percent out of thin air uh, and then just ship it all into a bank somewhere uh, that money is not moving that money is not changing hands what do i mean by the velocity of money well if if i go to uh speedway and i, I give them a five dollar bill and and uh buy two Mountain Dews and a, and a candy bar um, with it. Maybe maybe the, the, the clerk uses her paycheck to, to uh, go get a haircut that day and then the, 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 the guy that's getting a haircut, maybe he um, gets his car fixed and uses that money to go fix his car and the, that same five dollars is changing hands. That same, that $5, $10, $20, whatever, is moving around. But when COVID happened, the, the, the money just sat in the bank and the banks were not loaning any money uh, to anyone. It was just sitting there in the bank. It wasn't moving at all. Um, But as you can see, the velocity of money is actually negative here. The real federal funds rate. I like the Lacey Hunt because uh, he, he, he loves all these little graphs and stuff.
<clears throat> now this little this little snippet doesn't sound good to me the US government budget deficit has taken a serious turn for the worse this year the Inflation Reduction Act IRA and CHIPS and Science Act of 2022 as enacted add over one trillion that's T for trillion to the deficit over the next several years the Penn Wharton budget model however indicates that due to the way instructions were written the cost of the IRA is running three times greater than the amount appropriated by Congress. So if it's if it's supposed to be a trillion and it's running three times more, that would be what? Three trillion. Interest expense has risen dramatically higher as well. Part of the surge in the budget deficit reflects the fact that the Federal Reserve suffered an operating loss, which adds to the deficit compared to an operating surplus in fiscal year 2022, which reduced the deficit. Current year uh, federal tax reserves has also fallen considerably below a year ago. Preliminary estimates fiscal year 2023 deficit could be in the 1.6 to 1.9 trillion range. Government fiscal policy actions that either increase the size of government relative to GDP or increase the government debt relative to GDP significantly weaken the trend rate of economic growth. found that when gross government debt exceeds 90% of GDP for more than five years and econo economies lose one-third of the trend rate of growth. Gross U.S. government debt moved us decisively above this 90% threshold 10 years ago. You know the the per capita GDP of the U.S. is sixty thousand, but if the U.S. economy were on trend, real real per capita GDP would be approximately seventy three thousand, almost thirteen thousand higher than the actual level. Other major considerations indicate that the U.S. economy is far weaker than recognized. Productivity or output per hour in the non-farm sector declined by a record pace over the past 10 quarters. Neither a rising standard of living nor increase, increasing corporate profitability are achievable over time without higher productivity. For the 11 quarters since the pandemic recession ended, real hour average hourly earnings which cover 119 million full-time wage and salaried workers fell at a 2.9 <clears throat> percent annual rate 
This is the largest decline registered in any economic expansion or comparable length since the earnings <coughs> series originated. While firms continue to add employees, the rate of increase in wages have lagged inflation. Moreover, while establish establishments have continued to add employees, they have simultaneously reduced the number of hours that their staff are working. Since January, non-farm payrolls have increased by 1.2 million, but the average work week has dropped from 36.6 hours to 34.4 hours, leaving aggregate hours worked virtually unchanged. To restore productivity, firms will need to rationalize their workforce, which will simultaneously reduce labor costs, inflation, and household purchasing power. The continued tightening on financial cycle conditions will, with lower inflation and poor economic performance will mean that long-dated U.S. Treasury yields will continue to trend lower. And this guy is a bond expert, so he loves treasuries. And, and I, honestly, the only reason I bought 30-year treasuries was because of this guy, but um, I think we were he was wrong in that sense, but he's still the the smartest damn guy in the room. The risk of a recession continues to rise even though the economy grew in the first quarter. The Fed has neutralized the infl <clears throat> inflationary impact of the fastest modern era of money growth in 2020 and 2021. Other deposit liabilities in real terms have registered a double digit decline in the 12 months ended March <clears throat> with the 24 month change at a negative 5%. Over the past 12 months, real bank credit has declined even before the recent highly visible bank failures and is now unchanged for the past 24 months. Although monthly data is not available for World War II, the, la the latest 12-month decline in M2 as the, mon the money supply is undoubtedly the sharpest since 1934. Two considerations suggest that the rise in velocity in 2022 in the first quarter of This year, which has thus far interfered with the Fed's effort to contain inflation, will, will reverse. By formula and statistical estimation, velocity lags the business cycle. Since V equals GDP, a con, uh, constant variable divided by money, a leading variable, V must def, deficiently lag. Uh, Nometry velocity is determined by the marginal revenue product of debt and the loan to deposit ratio, both of which are lagging indicators. The uh, ECA metrics would be highly questionable if V were determined by leading indicators. With 10 trillion of total U.S. debt being rolled over this year, in an equivalent amount in 2024, the marginal revenue product of debt is set to decline late this year in 2024, allocating cash flow from debt funded projects to interest payments is the least productive use of these resources. While the LD ratio rose in the first quarter of 2022 as well, it is a lagging variable with its trough an average of 47 months after its recessionary peak. Under the weight of faltering business conditions, loads will follow and, and <clears throat> the, so will the LD ratio. When velocity turns down, 
monetary policy will have very little capability to stimulate economic activity. The well-known pushing on a string predicament will be totally insufficient to prescribe the situation that lies ahead. Accordingly, with lower declining economic activity, the inflation rate will continue to recede. Uh, further progress we've made in terms of moving uh, consumer inflation to the Fed's target zone in 2024. Therefore, with the historic pattern of the financial GDP and price labor cycles proceeding on its well-documented path, this year's decline in long-term treasury bonds is expected to decline. And I encourage you guys to listen to Lacey Hunt. I mean, this is an hour presentation. He's a very smart guy. But very, but GDP is continuing to rise. So I, I would say that um, uh, the the economy has uh, uh, experienced. Um, they're, they're, I, I would say they're beginning to feel the pressure, but it's it's not. It, we're not close to the to the middle innings by any chance. Okay, and that's sort of... Well, I don't know about you guys, but if anybody knows anything about baseball, they know there's nine innings in baseball, and, and he said we're not even in the to the middle innings yet. So if you think things are bad now, guys, watch out. Things are going to get worse. <laughs>